we visited the state of Indiana. Hey guys, I'm Lori. And I'm Rick. And we are here we go again. We are visiting the wonderful city of Santa Claus, Indiana. And we are at Lake Rudolph Campground RV Resort. Yeah guys, we've uh, been wanting to be visit this campground for a very long time. Finally made it and it's as good as what we had thought it would be. Yes. So, uh, but guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out this channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like it or if you find it helpful. And please subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you can get our upcoming videos as we release them. But we're getting ready to jump in the Jeep and give you a tour of this uh, campground. Thanks. All right, guys, so we're checking into the uh, Lake Rudolph Campground and RV Resort. Uh, you'll be able to tell that the area when you first come in is pretty wide, uh, so you can house a lot of motorhomes, and we were lucky that there was nobody there checking in when we actually came through. So, um, But the good news about this campground is it's about seven to eight miles from Interstate 64. It's very simple to get to. It was just one exit, one turn, and you just truck around some uh, cornfields. But I just walked around our site real, real quick here just to show you uh, what we had going on. We had a very level concrete pad, uh, which was nice, and a picnic table, fire pit, uh, as you can tell here. So it very wooded, lots of shade. <laughs> lots of shade. It was nice. And then here we are at the entrance coming in, and like Rick said, there's plenty of areas for your uh, campers when you're coming in, good wide turns, wide area. And the best thing, all those little cabins you see are actually check-in spots where you just drive your camper on through. You don't even have to get out of your vehicle, so that's pretty cool too. And they come right to your window and tell you where to go and how to get there. Um, they have golf cart rentals, as you can see, uh, lots of golf carts. They're everywhere. It's pretty useful too with the hills that well, you have. One thing that I enjoyed is that if once you check in and you've got your uh, ticket for your window, you know you don't have to go back through the gate. You can. They've got that one side like just like we went through there uh, on the right that you can just pass through all the traffic if there is anyone there checking in. So it's pretty quick to get through once you checked in. Yes. Um, as you can see, it's very well maintained. Nice big trees uh, and and it's not too tight to get your camper in in between on the lots either with the trees because I've been to a lot of campgrounds and it's just hard to maneuver but it, it seems pretty easy here um, they're wide the roads are wide a lot of them are one way you just have to be aware of it um, I think it's pretty cute that most of them are Christmas oriented yeah. names to their roads so uh, that's pretty neat the you know I like Christmas, so but there, that's something for me. That's something you would expect when you camp at a place called Santa Claus in Lake Rudolph. You know? right. I mean, that's one thing that we, we enjoyed. I mean, we loved and we've seen all the amenities and the things that were close by, but it's a great little Christmas feel, even though it was August. That's very true. You know, It could have been colder, but you know what? I can't complain. We the have great... weather was beautiful. Yeah, we have... Not too humid, not too hot. It got cool in the evenings. I actually wore a jacket, so just yes. that was, th was during summer, so it, fantastic. It, it felt like fall in West Virginia for yeah. us, but you know where you have to put a sweatshirt on to go sit by a campfire. But it was it was very nice. It was probably for August the coolest August camping trip we've had in a long, long time. Yes. As you can see there, there was the lake. They had fishing. They had a pier to fish off of. They had pedal boats. They had um, a volleyball court on the beach and the dog park was over there as well. Yes, yes, and you could see one of the roller coasters coming through where you, uh, some of those sites there were lake view, you know, you're by the lake, but I, I'm sure you can hear the roller coaster and the happy screams from Most definitely. From that. So it was, while we were there, I heard some screams, but yes. it's, it's all in good fun. The kids having a great time, but uh, as you can see, if you've got more than one or two vehicles, you might 
find some campsites that are pretty close together. Yes. Especially if they're large trucks, large SUVs, and you got your big fifth wheel or something like that there. But uh, uh, these campsites range right around $30 to $100, depending upon if you get the full premium pad with concrete and uh, sitting area for your picnic table or whether you're gravel and just exactly where you're at too in the season. Yes. So they also have cabin rentals, a ton of cabin rentals. I mean, probably the most that I've seen in any campground. Yes, yes, I would agree. Which is anywhere from 100 to $180 a night. But I think why they have so many is because they know Holiday World is right next door. And there's not, I mean, I didn't really see any hotels or anything around that place. No, I mean, Santa no Claus, even though it's a very cute town, it is on the smaller side. So I think, you know, for Holiday World, like, like, Rudolph is the place for staying. I, I would agree, unless you're going over to a distant town that we actually did visit as well. What was it, Ferdinand or Ferdinand, something like yeah. that? That's where uh, the McDonald's and Subway and that's where the that, fast food restaurants are. That's where we had are. to get some lunch at one day. But, you know, as you can tell here, here here's they had a couple of camp stores where they have ice cream, pizza, drinks, all kinds of little uh, knickknacks for souvenirs. They also had firewood there available for you, and I believe all of the little camp store areas had a little tiny arcade inside, but due to COVID, they had them closed. They had them closed. So yeah. that was one downside, but it, most of the other stuff was open just on yeah. half capacity. Take note, they do have sandals for, for guys, because I had to stop in and get a pair of sandals as well. Because he forgot to park, pack his, <laughs> so that's his fault. That's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, guys, uh, as you can tell here, the campsites are large. I mean, I, I'm I was a little impressed. Like we had a lot of room on our campsite. The, there, there were some that were on the smaller size, but the majority that I seen were were large. These campers that you're seeing right here are actually for rent as well. They actually rent out camp campers. So if you want the camper feeling, you don't want to be in the cabin. This is the way to go. And these camp these campers are huge. I mean, these are big campers. Yeah, you, you're going to sleep quite a few people in the camp, the campers that they had to rent. But uh, as Lori was saying, there is tons of shade here. I mean, but there were a couple of sites that did not have shade, but they were the newer sites that didn't have the trees growing and stuff like that, I think. And uh, But you, all you would have to do is ask and tell them you want a site with shade because they had plenty that were open. Yes. Yes, they also have areas for tent camp camping that actually go deeper into the woods back from the road. So, and you can get like a group together, group of tents, so you can ask about that as well. And they had little uh, pathways through the woods to get to different places instead of using the road because it can get pretty busy with the golf carts. Um, and they don't allow golf carts on the paths in the wooded area, so that's, you know, that's something to look at too, a little shortcut per se, because I tried riding the bike up a hill and I found out I was not as young as I used to be. <laughs> but uh, I they, made it though. You, you did. I did make it. You did. Uh, they do have uh, full hookup sites. They have pretty good Wi-Fi. Uh, some days were better than others depending yeah. upon how many people were in the park and, and you know and what hour it was and stuff, which is nothing new, but they didn't have cable TV. No. They did not have cable TV. Which doesn't bother me. No, it, it's it's not a make or break, but just let you let people know. But uh, they're, uh, they got one pool, which they cut down to 50% capacity due to COVID. And you had to sign up and make a reservation, but it wasn't bad at all. It was. I mean, I think when, when they told us that, I was a little weary of it. But uh, once you go and do it once, you're kind of like, eh, it's not a big deal. We never had any issues with signing up or getting the kids but the one thing they had that I absolutely loved and the kids absolutely loved was the water slides it cost the extra to do yes. but we we wore it out I mean I was worn out you wore it out and the kids wore it out yeah. I watched and took videos yeah but it was a whole lot of fun it was worth the I think it was eight or nine dollars per person but that gave you access to the splash pad and uh, I'll, I'll additional little water features that they had there which was great and it was for the whole day so if you wanted to spend a couple hours go home eat or go back to your camper and eat 
come back, you had it for the whole day. So that was pretty nice too. So the kids, my goodness, one day I think we were there for five hours. Yeah. I'm pretty definite it was around five hours. Well, I, I know at one point late in the evening, it was me and the, and the boys there for like an hour by ourselves. Uh, and we were just straight down, straight back up. I mean, it was, I, w I was dead tired. I slept pretty good that <laughs> night. I think I slept good every night. Yeah, I, that's true too. But uh, yeah. guys, they, they do have fire pits at all their uh, campsites. Laundry room, bathhouses were super clean. Super clean, yes. This campground does an excellent job at maintaining their, uh, not only campsites, campground, but the uh, bathhouses and stuff, guys, they came in every day uh, and took care of it, you know, due to COVID, I'm, they were doing an excellent job cleaning and taking care of stuff. They also, when we checked in, gave us masks to wear because they do encourage wearing masks when you go in and out of the camp stores and the bathhouses, anytime that you cannot social distance they would really appreciate you wearing your mask inside facilities. Not so much at the pool or anything, but inside the facilities. Yeah. But uh, they, like Lori said, they are dog friendly. They had a, a dog park. Um, but one thing that I loved, I mean, and, and you just seen it just a few minutes ago here, uh, was the holiday world. We, we spoke about it. We went there one day. Uh, they've got roller coasters. They've got water slides. And water slides, guys, it was a blast. It was. I, I was a little iffy about the water slides. For one, I'm not a big water person. And two, the pool was so cold at the campground that I didn't like it. I think it was because it got so cool in the evenings and the nights. So that's what I was dreading. But I have to say the water wasn't too cold yeah. at the splat or at the Holiday World. Yeah, it, it was a blast. I mean, and they did a good job. Holiday World. I give them great credit. They they kept uh, the what 50% occupancy, mm -hmm. uh, and you know you had to wear a mask to get in. There were a lot of people wearing masks on the roller coaster, uh, the amusement park side, but not so much the water. No, I mean it, it just got too hard. It no one wants to breathe through a wet mask. Yeah, but uh, it it was a lot of fun. And, and guys, I'm talking, it's three minutes outside the campground. Not very far at all. And I do believe they have shuttle buses, but I don't think they were operating yeah. during this. So I don't remember. Well, they did have a shuttle service because David mentioned it. Well, I mean, I remember seeing it, but I don't know if it was running or open while no, we were there. No, I don't. I never saw it running. Yeah. So, uh, but <laughs> also in, you know, in this town, Santa Claus, Santa's Candy Castle, which was mm. on my list to go to because I'm a huge man versus food watcher. Love Casey. He actually went here and did uh, a challenge, and I wanted to go and do the challenge, but due to COVID, they were not doing the challenge. I could guarantee you wouldn't have made it through the oh, challenge. Oh, I know, but I wanted to say, <laughs> YouTube, I did the challenge, and I failed. And he failed, but didn't have to worry about that. Now, yeah. see, I could have passed the iced hot chocolate challenge. Yeah. You may not have, but I would have been able to. So, all in all... Wonderful stay, great visit, kids had fun, we had fun. Definitely a place that we would love to go to again because of Holiday World especially. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I, I, I liked it. It was, it was not a bad drive for us. Uh, I enjoyed visiting the Christmas store. They actually have a toy store there in the area, but we didn't venture to it. No. But uh, we had a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, looking forward to going back. Yes. Yeah. I just don't know when. Yeah. But guys, we really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And until next time. God bless. Safe travels. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, campers, go check out our apparel store if you haven't already. Link is in the description of this video. Promo code HWGA20 for 20% off for a limited time only. Safe travels, guys, and God bless. Bye.